look at that. Up he goes, over the top he goes. And there the beast has got him in an absolute gymnastics hold. Whoops him back down. Oh, that's just brilliant strength. Unbelievable strength. Man, so that was a good workout. A good workout, man. I hope you got some gains today. Of course, my brother. Let's get you started for your day. Let's do this, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, in fact, so I, I know you used to be a brand ambassador for, yeah, for Land was it Land Rover? Yeah, Land Rover. It's my favorite car. Land Rover. Yeah. yeah. What's cooler than AC? Nobody. Nobody's cooler than AC. The only AC remotely cool as this AC is Air Excellence, and that's only for your car, baby. Hi guys, please remember to comment and give us your feedback and don't forget to press the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Head bowed, enjoy the show. My brother, man, thank you for taking this interview. It's an absolute big deal for me. So, I am honored. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, so you come out of the gym or you're in the gym, what are you listening to? I'm listening to Gaffa. Gaffa? 25. I mean, I like Ja Fraser <laughs> just for the record, but okay. Gaffa is the one, man. <laughs> okay, so so we're gonna play Gaffa and we're gonna vibe to it. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Man, that's man, it, that's so, it. <laughs> so you're still connected to Zim music? Yeah, I'm Even still very, man, uh, so connected, man. I promise you, it brings me back home every time I now put on a bit of Gaffa. You know, I love my Tuku, uh, Job Prince, you name it, man. So, yeah? You know, it brings me home, man. So tell me something. The mindset of a champion, the mindset of a sports athlete. I mean, you operated peak performance every time you have to get on the field. What's the conditioning? that goes through, that you must go through to become a, a supreme athlete? No, I know obviously, you know, there's a great demand on, on yourself as an individual if you want to make it. You know, obviously you get two parts, you get the physical uh, part and the mental part. So, you know, the physical part is your conditioning, you know, your work in the gym and, uh, you know, uh, your diet, what you put in, you know, the, the fuel, you, you know, you feed on and, uh, you know, the work on the field, your skills. Uh, and then, uh, you know, after you've done all that stuff, you know, you're super fit. And then comes the mental you know, right. uh, part of it. That's where, you know, you have to get yourself in that space where you know that you're, you know, you, you kind of prepared for the battle ahead. And, uh, yeah, and as well, you know the challenges that you're going to face. And, uh, you know, the best way to prepare mentally um, is to, you know, probably write down your goals and you visualize or you think about it every day. For myself, you know, I do it every season and I write down what I want to achieve you uh -huh. know, and I put a list down and I make sure I, I get to see those goals every single day when I wake up in the morning and they become a reality and I actually start, you know, the more I think about it, the more I become it, you know. So, you know, that, that, that mental part is crucial. So they actually say <laughs> the physical part is 20% and 80% uh, is mental. When do you leave? Tonight. Tonight? Oh, that was short-lived. Short-lived, yeah, because I got training um, uh, starting on Monday, so I have to uh, get back tonight, sort out my stuff before the week, tomorrow, and then uh, it's a big week next week. Yeah, we, we lost our last game, so hey. Coaches, uh, yeah, not, not having it. Not having it, so we have to come with the, uh, yeah, with the uh, uh, focus mindset for Monday, and then so before we we actually start the week, we do like <laughs> uh, analysis on Sunday. You're supposed to sit down in front of your computer. We've got this um, uh, 
um, program that we use called Huddle. Mm -hmm. So you get on and you watch the games. So what I have to do tomorrow is watch like um, our opposition next Saturday, which is the Melbourne Rebels from Australia. Then I watch the games that they've played. I watch my like my direct opposition. Uh, see what he's doing. And then on Monday, I actually present. You present? Mm, how are you going to deal with them? So yeah, so how I'm gonna like how are we gonna? So I I um, I am the like they call me like the mini coach. Okay. So they they do that with players now. You are mini coaches in your own right. They want players to take ownership. Right. So I will present to the team what I've seen, what the trends are like in terms of their forward play, scrums and lineouts. So I have to do all my analysis tomorrow, like sit in front of a computer for like a couple of hours. And dry stuff down. It's <laughs> it's pro to the yeah to the T man. So. Now you you've broken a barrier. A lot of artists, a, a lot of athletes from Zimbabwe are trying to break. Have failed to break. In fact, when I think of the most important sports stars we have right now, you are right at the top of that for me. Right, probably you know, followed by Axel Jeffries or something. Um, you're right there at at the top, but. It's not, I'm not impressed by the fact that you're at the top. I'm impressed by the fact that you've been at the top for so long. Because getting to the top is one thing, right? Yes. Staying at the top is another. What has given the beast staying power? Oh, man, yeah. It's a good question. <laughs> and I, I won't lie to you, you know, I guess for myself, it's always, you know, being, uh, being humble, you know, through my successes, mm -hmm. through all this, you know, these milestones I've achieved and... Um, I've always uh, had people around me that have kept me grounded mm -hmm. because, you know, the success can definitely get to your head, you know, you can get a big head and they think that, you know, you, you made it and you just take it easy and kind of just live on your reputation. But, uh, you know, what has made me, you know, stay hungry is actually like guys that are trying to take me out of my position, you know, that, that, that are actually working day and night to try and, uh, you know, remove me from where I am, you know, let's, you know, let it be the Springboks or be the Sharks, you know, they've seen me, you know, obviously play there for long, so they're, they're trying to plan my demise in some sense, so I, I make sure that I stay ahead of my competition, you know, I, I challenge myself, you know, every season to get better, to, you know, to push myself to greater heights, and I can tell you I'm a much improved player than I was back when I started in 2007 for the Sharks. Right. Because you know, I've always, always constantly taken, uh, you know, criticism, positive criticism from people, uh, you know, that I trust around me, people that really are honest with me, you know, that want to see me be better. And I've taken that stuff on board and I've applied it to my life every single day, every single season. You know, and just made that step up. So, you know, it's kind of actually like surprised a lot of people saying, how can this guy be at this, you know, level for so long? I mean, you're like on a, <laughs> you're over 100 caps now yeah, for spring box. A, yeah, I played 107 tests for the box. Yeah. Jeez, man. You know, yeah. here's a transition I've never heard you explain. So, you might not know this, but I was about three, four years behind you at school. Uh, I was at Prince Edward. Oh, okay. And you Maybe came to pay, to play, at Prince Edward, and I remember all the seniors saying, you're about to watch the show of your life. Like, <laughs> this guy, I, I'm sure we beat you, but... <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> but everybody was looking forward to you coming, but you were an eighth man. Yes, I was an eighth man. And you were the most domineering eighth man anybody had seen in high school rugby. And yet, the first time I saw you on TV, I never saw you play eighth man. How did you transition <laughs> from an eighth man where you're almost very loose yeah. to you know i guess a loose prop now that yeah you know, where you're almost very yeah in the front like what did you back here that's your team how do you manage that especially at a professional level yeah i mean it was uh you know a big thing uh and um you know at the time you know when i left or went to the sharks it's actually like you said as a number eight you know they scouted me playing at number eight and I went there and obviously, you know, you know, impressed them, you know, with my skills and my power and speed. But the one thing I was lacking was height. <laughs> right. And they were saying, ah, you know what? But you're like six uh, foot. Yeah, I'm actually here. Yeah. So they were saying, you know, for the lineouts that we do on the field, uh, not, uh, I probably wouldn't be the best suitable 
you know, a person to jump in the line out. Mm -hmm. So I think just my body as well, my body shape, my power in the gym, my, you know, all these things um, kind of led to the main uh, shark coach at the time. His name was uh, Dick Muir. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Dick Muir. He um, is actually probably my influential coach of all time in my career. Um, he's the one that saw me playing for uh, the under 19s. Uh, and then he's like to himself, you know what, this dude could actually be in the front row and dominate and actually, you know, uh, become a success. Uh, and uh, he decided, you know what, hey, let me chat to him a bit. So he invited me to, my, to his office. Uh, so I was thinking to myself, you know, as a youngster, I'm working hard to be a shark. You know, I'm trying, I'm, you know, tirelessly, you know, to, to become a part of the, you know, the bigger team, you know, the senior squad. So when I got the call from the from the you know the senior coach, I'm thinking to myself, this is him trying to obviously say, hey, I'm in, I'm in. He's offering me a contract. Everything I've been you know working hard for is now about to come to fruition. How much of you making it to professional sport was by default was you know obvious, and how much of it was you had to work, and how much work did you have to do to get there? I think. <laughs> It was definitely all work, eh? nothing by default, I can tell you, you know. Because uh, you were a high school kid. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're competing against the South African kids who look like tanks. <laughs> I know. So, you know, how much of it was about you versus the system versus talent? No, I think, you know, I think right from the onset, you know, ever since I was at school, I think uh, since the age of 16 when I was at Churchill and then uh, and I went to Peter House for my A-levels, I just had this, you know, this uh, standard of excellence, you know, the way I trained, I used to make sure that I, you know, I trained, uh, trained, trained super hard in the whole season, stuff that was never done at that time. I would make sure that I, you know, I gym and work on my, my strength and, you know, just on my, you know, my muscle build, uh, my gains, you know, making sure that I, and I keep on developing myself, you know. Uh, from an early age, so so I kind of you know adopted that standard of excellence from a very young age, so it became a part of me, it became second nature. So when I obviously got approached, uh, you know, by the Sharks, you know, at the time I was playing at, uh, at Peter House, uh, we went on tour to South Africa, played a couple of schools in Durban, and there happened to be some uh, Shark scouts uh, watching, and they were impressed with what they saw. They offered me uh, a bursary to come and study and play rugby at the academy. And for me, that was like uh, everything I'd been working for, you know. And, 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 and what was your mindset in high school about your talent? Uh, you know, I, 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 I had the, at the, at the you know, very first time when I played the game, I, I kind of was discovering myself. And when I actually became really good at the game, and that's, you know, people around me sort of saying, hey, dude, if you take this this uh, rugby series, this sports series, you can actually become, you know, a professional athlete. And, you know, those people like feeding those positive words to me and led, you know, to me actually being so serious about the game from a young age and working hard on my conditioning and my strength and, uh, you know, everything just, yeah, that literally, carried me through my career. Were you smart in school? Yes, I was very smart. <laughs> yes, what did, what did man. you get for your O-level? I, I got, uh, I got, I think, four Bs, a couple of Cs, but my A-levels were probably more impressive than my O's. So you got four Bs at O-level? Yeah, I got That's four not Bs. smart. Not you and me! <laughs> That's smart, man! But you know what? This is going to impress you. Except it doesn't you. matter, because you still got the money. No, so. no, no! This is going to impress you, Tell man. Tell me. A-level, I did maths, uh, accounts, Business studies, and I got an A in Cambridge. Maths, my guy. A. A level. Maths. Can you believe that? No, not a lot of folks don't. They don't believe me when I say that. So you can count good. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, man. I'm like, uh, and that's all you gotta do, yeah, right? Yeah, you gotta know how to cut the it. money because I mean, you were preparing yourself for a world where you gotta count a lot of money. So you no, just no, have to no. know how to do. That. No, man, it's cheap change. It's cheap change. <laughs> man, your workout made me hungry. So, as customary on the show, I'ma pass through my favorite spot and get me some chicken in. I mean, do you, do you, do you have chicken in in South Africa? No, we don't have chicken in, and. Uh, 
I miss it. Like, you uh, miss chicken? I miss chicken. I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna hook, hook you, you up with some chicken in. <laughs> man, I know people who know people. Be so when I'm in Joburg, you can look after me. Yeah, I got you, man. All right, I let's take you. care of some chicken in, man. Hey, we're gonna get beast some chicken in. It's US dollar price now too. Let's do it. Extraterrestrial. Okay, so let's talk about your career. Um, I'm going to ask a series of questions uh, and you answer them uh, how you wish. Career highlights. The one moment, if you could take a picture and freeze it in your whole career, what moment is that? Uh, it would be winning the British Irish Lions series in 2009 with the Springboks. Um, yeah, the first taste in Durban where I got a man of the match performance. Uh, that would be yeah, special, special day. The hardest player you've played against? Richie Moko, captain for New Zealand for maybe a of years. Played about 150 tests and uh, probably one of the best rugby players. Not the best rugby player. Who's the, who's the player on your team you can't stand the most? Like you <laughs> love him, but you're like, oh, I can't stand this guy. <laughs> Oh, who do you wish you could remove from the team for a month and bring back later? <laughs> Just to annoy him. Hey man, who's gonna watch this show? Because <laughs> I might get in trouble here, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna throw my guys. But he knows himself. <laughs> he knows himself. <laughs> he knows himself. Uh, the player who motivates you the most? Uh, yeah, Ben it's a bit. Uh, he's uh, yeah one of the probably, uh, heroes. Uh, Great inspiration to myself. The best coach you had before your current coach right now because we don't want to upset him. So before, except your current coach, best coach you ever had? Uh, Dick Muir. Um, yeah, he coached the Sharks and the Springboks uh, in 2000 and, between 2007 and 2011. Yeah, definitely the best. Prince Edward or Churchill? Churchill. I'm sorry, what am I saying? Peter House or Churchill? <laughs> of course it's Prince Edward. Peter <laughs> House or Churchill? <laughs> No nah, man, I can't choose between the two, man. Uh, the both of both of them, you know, contributed to 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 myself becoming the person I am today. So I am, you know, yeah, I'm just in all of both schools. I'm, yeah, love them both. Who was the most important teacher or coach for you in high school? Uh, it was uh, a guy by the name of PPTD, uh, Peter House. Yeah, he told me a lot about being a gentleman. Toughest loss of your career? <laughs> uh, Japan in 2015. And, uh, you lost rugby to the Japanese. I, mean, I can't believe I'm even mentioning <laughs> this. But we just had a bad day, man. But uh, yeah, that's it. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, the the um, greatest hoo ha moment. The moment when you're like, yeah, we got you back. Greatest get back moment. Greatest get back moment was beating the All Blacks, probably, yeah, last year in Wellington. Mm -hmm. uh, after they said that uh, you know, they looked like they would win 100 test matches at home without being defeated. And we stopped them last year in Wellington, yeah. Who's the one player you have never if you could take a player to play with on your team, of the players right now playing rugby, who would you really like to have on your team? Uh, Sharks or Springboks? Somebody who's who's not playing anymore. Who's current? Current. Uh, even it's a bit. Why? <laughs> nah, he's one of my best buddies. Uh, and uh, he's a fighter, warrior. Yeah, he definitely want to have him on your side. Other than that, rather than against you. you know. Do you feel Zimbabwe not back? I oh, definitely feel Zimbabwe in South Africa. <laughs> no, man, uh, that's one thing, man. My roots, uh, you know, everything to me. You know, that's why you know, I make sure that uh, you know, I come, I'm coming back home a lot more now and getting involved in, you know, in a lot of projects and uh, you know, in sport in general. And uh, yeah, man, I got big plans for the future for Zimbabwe. And you know, South Africa is where I apply my trade. You know, it gave me 
opened the door for me, you know, to become a professional rugby player. So, uh, you know, man, I am, uh, like I say, like Peter Owens and Churchill, man. I'm, you know, I'm just, uh, I love, I love both countries. And my roots are here, will always be here. So I'm a Zimbo, but I'm also South African. What's your favorite show to say? Uh, my favorite show right now would be... <laughs> Chumdara. <laughs> Chumdara. I like saying that. I've actually taught a lot of my teammates uh -huh. to say Chumdara. So uh, it's probably my favorite. Yeah, my favorite thing um, to say in Jona. So sport in South Africa is very political. Uh, you cannot take away uh, the race in the various sports. Like when you go to soccer, you expect a race, a certain race to be soccer. When you go to rugby, it's like a very white South African sport. So how did you navigate to be a black boy, not just a black boy, a black Zimbabwean in the first team of South Africa? I think, uh, you know, uh, I'd say in, in, in the beginning, um, um, yes, the, there was uh, a lot of that, you know, um, a lot of division, you know, especially you know, with the black people saying that they're not well represented in the national team. And, uh, you know, when I came onto the scene, I pretty much became one of the first black uh, consistent players in the box, in the box side. And uh, I think it actually, like, you know, um, uh, drove me to becoming uh, a better player because I knew that I was representing pretty much all of black South Africa. So I had to really work harder uh, yeah, than, you know, my opposition or guys that were different color that were trying to, you know, play the same position as myself so I made sure that I just put my head down and not really listen to the negative comments in the media because it was something that was like the elephant in the room always being spoken about so I kind of just had a ton of vision and just focused on, you know, on my job and did my, my job exceptionally well and that's what kept me in the team uh, and then uh, now you know I would say the the team has moved you know towards a uh, much you know better direction uh, in terms of representation you can see now we've got a black captain the first black captain you ever see a police and uh, you know that is just united the nation uh, in so many ways and there's so many good black youngsters come, you know that are coming onto the scene now and uh, you know just deserve unmarried to play for the box so I'd say like you know the whole perception that was there has kind of changed it's moved away from that now to actually becoming a team that represents the nation. How do you deal with the pressure of you're the black guy who made it so you must represent us now? You must speak our political causes, you must speak our social causes. You're the Zimbabwean who's listening to you. You must say our political pains. I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah that's, that's tough sometimes, but it's important too, as, a, you know, as a sports person, not just a rugby player. You gotta separate yourself, you know, away from politics, because politics and sport don't mix. So if people are Muhammad trying... Muhammad Ali didn't separate. <laughs> okay, yes, you know, Muhammad Ali represented his people. I think he was, you know, he was, he was passionate about his people. So he, he kind of, you know, spoke against, you know, spoke about stuff that was... Uh, that you know, could ruin his career. Yeah, that I mean, could ruin. It almost did ruin his career. It almost did, but I guess it was a different time. But right. I guess, you know, so I, I think it's it's important. There's a balance. You know, you can speak uh, you can speak about certain stuff, but if you want to be controversial and you know try and uh, you know become a bit of a rebel, and that's just not going to help you. You know, it's just going to. Kubasa, 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 kubasa. You got to separate. Mm. You know. You can't be like that. You can't be trying to be a politician and a sportsman at the same time. Mm. You know, it's, it doesn't work. Um, Kirsty Coventry is uh, a good friend of yours. I know yes, that. Yes. Uh, and she's now the Minister of Youth in Zimbabwe. Um, and Sports and Recreation. And sp sorry, Sports and Recreation. Maybe I should have actually said she's the Minister of Sports and Recreation. Um, <laughs> Do, do, do you get to, to talk to her about some of the things you think we can do for Zimbabwe? Yes, a especially lot. kids rugby. Yes, a lot, man. You know, Kirsty and myself, you know, like you said, we really, really good friends. I actually caught up with her last night at dinner with her and her husband. Uh, and uh, you know, what I like about Kirsty, you know, for her, it's it's pure love for the 
know, for, for, for just sport in general, mm-hmm. you know, that uh, that got her into that position and obviously what she achieved as a, you know, as a sportswoman. And um, I think, you know, for the future of, you know, sports uh, in, in Zimbabwe, you know, for things to really turn around, you know, we were talking last night about the structures uh, that need to be Im- implemented and, you know, it needs to be something even small, uh, but if it if it uh, if it if it's obviously um, rolled out, then it's be- going to become contagious. Mm-hmm. It's going to start becoming something bigger. People are going to actually see that you know it can be done. So when you look at the setup in rugby now, what what isn't there that if it was there we could create more beasts? Okay, I would say you know there is no structures after schoolboy rugby. Right. You know there's uh, there's no place where. You know, a young uh, young boy who's excelled at school, really talented in the game, and he wants to, you know, pursue a professional a career. Uh, there's no uh, proper setup, you know, where you can actually go and get the right coaching, conditioning, right facilities, and also, you know, just get the right diet, right advice. And for myself, you know, my dream. Since I uh, you know, got to South Africa and experienced the best of the best, was always to take some of that stuff that I learned and bring it back home and uh, in the form of an academy. So my dream is actually to, to build an academy, a state-of-the-art academy you know, that is going to be uh, a symbol of excellence and is going to really inspire these kids, you know, to, you know, to, to, to get to the next level mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, bring in the best coaching, you know, to actually mentor these coaches that are around in Zimbabwe so they can actually start, you know, uh, you know getting themselves better because ultimately if they, you know, they, they start using the modern ways, that's, in, that's you know, going to also impact the, the athletes, you know, to also become, you know, uh, you know, better and use better ways. So I think, you know, right now there's a lot of ad, old-fashioned tactics that we use mm-hmm. that need to be polished up. So I've seen a whole lot of stuff that I want to, you know, I want to get involved in. And, you know, my academy would, you know, be just a stepping stone for young athletes. Not just, not like just rugby, yeah. not I like just rugby. Yeah. Mm. So I want to aim uh, at, at athletics as well because there's a lot of talent in athletics. There's a lot of talent in cricket. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I think basketball is a, is a, is a, is, 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 it's a sport that we're actually good at. You know, I think schoolboy basketball is really competitive but you know kids can't really play basketball after school because there's no there's no league or there's no like a proper place where they can actually you know apply their trade what what sport do you watch the most outside of rugby basketball i'm a huge basketball fan yeah what's your team the lakers i'm a lebron fan so i yeah, uh, yeah i follow lebron him? i was supposed to meet him but i didn't meet him <laughs> i went to go watch him play uh actually last year uh-huh. I watched the Lakers play the Jazz, uh, and uh, yeah, LeBron is like a god, man. He is, yeah, he's, he's a, a supreme athlete. He's a supreme athlete, and to get to him is not easy. And I thought I would just get a handshake, but it didn't happen. What's well, gonna happen soon, you know, LeBron? If you're you know, LeBron, when you're watching TLF Drive, know that I've got some of your fans in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man, I'm a huge fan. So I want to ask you something as a performer. Um, there are moments when you lose. And it hurts. And I've always wondered, how do you pick yourself up from a defeat to be able to get back in the game the next day and win? What do coaches say to players after a loss? Or what do players say to themselves? I think uh, for myself, you know, what I've been taught all along my career is that there is uh, definitely a, a moping period where, you know, you drop your head it about the loss, you kind of you know, think about it, but there's a cut of time as well. So Sundays is usually our time to mop and you know mourn a loss and you know and get over it. So by Monday, you're supposed to press the reset button. You've done almost everything that can be done in in your position as a as a rugby player. You've achieved what, if many achieved half, they'll be called successes. You're kind of coming to the end of your career in South Africa. I know you're going to be making some moves. So number one, what happens after South Africa? But number two, what's important to you after rugby? Okay. Um, obviously, uh, my plan going forward, um, 
Yeah, this is my last year. It's a massive year. It's a, you know, it's a World Cup year. So I wanna, you know, I wanna play my best rugby this year. I wanna go out on the, you know, with a bang. I wanna leave on a high. And then, uh, yeah, and then after that, you know, the legacy. I wanna leave as well. You know, it's 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 very important to me. You know, I wanna I want people to see that. You know, I was a player that came onto the scene and really made a mark and opened the door for the next generation. It inspired a whole lot of young, you know, black. Rugby players that you know they could actually play at the highest level for a long time, and you know, hopefully uh, a lot of them will become uh, centurions, and you know even go to surpass you know what I've done, mm -hmm. and then uh, you know also giving back. You know I want to be uh, a player that is known for you know playing a vital role in the community and giving back, and just you know being a great role model to all kids in general. Mm. That this is how you live your life. This is how you, you know, you treat your, your you know, your, 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 your family, you know, your peers. You know, just to be, you know, like, you know, yeah, just a all-rounded all star, you know, I guess. Yeah. An all so round, before man. before I let you go, there's a lot of young young boys and perhaps girls who will be watching right now, looking at you, and you are probably everything they want to be uh, at the level that they are now. If you had to tell them three things that they must stick by, and these are sacrosanct, what are the three things that must be sacrosanct to a young athlete who wants to become as successful as you did? No, I think the, you know the first one I'll say is that you know dream big, you know because dreaming big that's where it all starts. You gotta know what you want to achieve, where you want to get to. Then after you do that, then you know write it down, you know, put your goals down them a reality, you know, read them out every single day, and then after that, you know, have the discipline to achieve them, you know, the work ethic and, you know, the focus, all, the, you know, the stuff that you need to get there, you know, and put all your energies towards that, and then, you know, ne never let anybody tell you that you can't, you can't achieve it, you know, you can't achieve greatness because you can, because mm -hmm. I was that, that young kid once upon a time, you know, <laughs> uh, who dreamed of becoming a pro athlete, a pro rugby player. And then there's a lot of people that told me that I'm not, I, I'm not gonna get there. You know, I um, come from an underprivileged background, all of this stuff. But I kind of tunnel vision, and I just went, you know, all out, had a you know, never, die, never, never die attitude. And then in the end, uh, and I'm, I am where I am today because of that decision I made. You know. When I was a youngster, my brother, I gotta tell you, you influenced <laughs> me. You know, we from high school, you didn't even know who I was. We knew who you were. We wanted you to do well. We routed for you, and where you are now is such an important position because we look at you, and you reflect to us what we can become. You are the influencer that influences influences that influence them. So you influence people like me, and I want I want you to know, man, I got uh, mad respect for you. No, thanks. So from man, one maverick see. to another. Much appreciated, man. Thanks, AC, man. Thanks for having me on the show, man. And enjoy the rest of your time <laughs> in Zimbabwe. I'll hit you up when we go back. Everybody, there's the man. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Until next time, everybody, head bowed.